Okay, here's another book. This one's more for you, Suze, but Ryan, you might like to listen to it too. Wild Rescuers. This is one of Aunty B's ones, so I thought you might like it, Suze. Guardians of the Tiger. Look, there's wolf dogs. I don't even know what this is about, so let's see. Wild Rescuers. Oh, there's lots of animals in this story. Look, look at them all. You in chooks. <laughs> okay, and wolf pups. Chapter one. Stacy lay on her back and stared straight into the eyes of the giant white wolf looming above her. The wolf's eyes were fixed fiercely on hers. Suddenly his sharp teeth sliced into the sleeve of her denim jacket, narrowly missing her left arm and pinning her to the ground. How do I keep getting myself into these wild predicaments, Stacy thought to herself. To complicate matters, the upper half of her body was dangling off a cliff. And immediately to her right, a small rushing stream flowed off the cliff into a narrow waterfall that thundered 30 feet into a pool of white water in the river below. But Stacy's thoughts weren't focused on the wolf or on the steep drop and the water beneath her. They were focused on a rabbit. Just out of her reach, down the jagged cliffside, on a sturdy branch poking out of the rushing falls, a baby bunny sat shivering. Oh, the poor little thing. One small movement and the rabbit would fall from its precarious perch to its death in the water below. I've been in worse situations, I think, Stacy thought. I can do this. She tilted her head back to get a better look at the bunny. It was white with black spots and its little ears were flopped in front of its eyes, either because it didn't want to face the reality of its dangerous situation or because of the mist from the waterfall had plastered them there. In an attempt to reach it, Stacy tried swinging her right arm down behind her, but the small creature was still a few feet from her fingertips. She turned her attention back to the angry wolf, who had not loosened his grip on her jacket sleeve. It's okay, Everest, Stacy said calmly. The large wolf replied with a low rumbling growl. If you relax your hold just a tiny bit, I can lean far enough to grab it, probably. Once again, the wolf growled a warning. Let me go, Everest, Stacy said, more firmly this time. Everest didn't often respond to commands, even though Stacy knew he understood them, but she had to try anyway. I can do it, she insisted. The wolf shook his head. His eyes had a pleading look. If he could talk, Stacy knew he would say to her, it's my job to keep you safe. And it's my job to rescue this bunny, Stacy thought, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. The mental exchange between them lasted only a few seconds, but it gave Stacy the time she needed to think over the rescue in her mind. Everything would depend on perfect precision and split second timing. Finally, she had her plan. Fine, she said, and watched the wolf back off. Then with a grin, you can keep the jacket, Everest. I didn't want it to get wet anyway. Everest's silver eyes flashed as he realised what Stacy was about to do, but he was too late. In one fluid motion, Stacy wriggled out of her jacket, rolled into the stream and flipped around just as she slid over the edge of the, into the waterfall. Whoa. As she fell, her hands reached for and thankfully found the slick branch with the bunny. She grabbed the branch with one hand and scooped up the baby rabbit with the other, sheltering it against her chest while her feet found footing on the wet rocks behind the falls. Whoa. Water pounded on her back, spraying in all, direction, all directions while she struggled to maintain her position. She looked around, frantically searching for a way back onto the mountain, but she quickly realised there was nowhere to go but down. Ooh. Stacy tucked the bunny underneath her well-worn blue and white striped shirt, a cast off from some careless camper who'd left it behind in the woods where Stacy lived. Noah, she shouted, are you ready? She waited for the sound of a bark or a howl from below, but she was met only with the deafening noise of the falls. Her feet were beginning to slip and her fingers were having trouble holding onto the slimy branch. I hope rabbits know how to hold their breath, she whispered to the little creature. Stacy inhaled deeply, closed her eyes 
and leapt. She crossed both arms across her chest, hugging the rabbit close to her as the two of them plunged into the swirling rapids. After crashing through the surface, Stacy opened her eyes underwater. Unfortunately, the churning made it impossible for her to see which way was up. She blew a little bit of air out of her mouth and watched the bubbles float away to her left. Ah, that way. There's her. Look at that. Gosh, she's brave. She was all the way up there. She came down to rescue the bunny. Down, down, down into the bottom of the waterfall. Let's see what happens. But even kicking as hard as she could, she was stuck in the circular current where the waterfall cascaded into the river. If only she'd been able to jump several feet out from the waterfall rather than straight down. Relax, she told herself. Noah's coming. Don't panic if you do. You'll drown. With her last bit of air, Stacy pressed her lips to the bunny's tiny mouth and blew into his lungs, trying to keep it alive. And then she did what she told herself to do. She relaxed, sinking further into the pool down below the rapids. Suspended in the dark blue-green water underneath the churning waves, she started to count in her head. One, two, three, four. She hadn't yet reached five when she felt a large jaw close around her shoulder. The wolf's grip was tight, tight enough to pull her to the surface and then proceed to manoeuvre her downriver where the water was calm. With her head above the surface, Stacy gulped in the crisp spring air and felt her lungs burn with oxygen. Then she checked the bunny. It was stunned and shivering, but still alive. Cutting it a little close there, Noah, Stacy said teasingly to the giant wife, white wolf paddling beside her. She plopped the sopping wet rabbit on top of Noah's head. The bunny started to blink the water out of its eyes and then looked down in wide-eyed terror at the white wolf's snout. No, you didn't go through all that just to be wolf dinner, Stacy said, hoping it would understand her. You're safe now. Hi, Grandad. Hi, Grandad. <laughs> Stacy and Noah paddled together to the riverbank and stumbled onto the shore. The thin vines Stacy usually used to tie her long brown curls into a side braid had been lost in the waterfall, and now her hair was a tangled mess. She combed it using her fingers and then wrung out the bottom of her shirt and rolled up her wet jeans. Noah lowered his head next to a large rock and the bunny hopped off, clearly relieved, but still slightly shaky. Stacy scooped it up. You're okay, little bunny, she, she cooed, cradled it in her arms. She turned the bunny over to inspect it and make sure it was unharmed. And you've got quite the story to tell your friends. The bunny stared blankly back at her. Now repeat after me. I will not jump down waterfalls. Noah shook his entire body, spraying water droplets in all directions. They looked like tiny diamonds in the sunlight. Stacy laughed and ran her fingers through his damp coat. Then she tussled the messy tuft of fur between his ears and stared into his intense blue eyes. You're definitely getting better at driving, boy, she told him. We were in there pretty deep. You got to us just in time. Might leave that one there and we'll read some more tomorrow. Mwah. Bye, kids.